everyone, welcome to Welford Weaves. I don't know if that's gonna be the name. I don't know what this little ditty is going to be in the long run, but I thought that I would come and share with you a little bit about what's been going on with my weaving. There is so much to talk about, and as I've been discussing with friends recently over the last number of months, there is this need to talk about weaving and to gush about weaving and to work through all of the projects that we've got going on our looms. And because there is this sort of natural thing about weaving that it is quite solitary, you're working in, you know, in your studio, at home, in your living room, in your dining room, in a spare bedroom, you're working through your patterns, you're working at the loom, you're working quietly, methodically, and you're not necessarily in a big group of people, in a big workshop, or um, gathered for a sit and stitch, or on Zoom with friends from around the world working at your loom, because so often when we're working at our looms, a, the looms are very big. <laughs> they take up a lot of space. You can't just drag them around. And B, you often have to concentrate. There is sort of that deep work and that deep thought that happens at the loom. So I thought I would bring you today along with me while I chat with you a little bit about what I've been working on recently. This sort of helps to also just not clog up the podcast quite so much with non-spinning and knitting related content. And so like I said, I don't know what this will look like, but here we are, and I want to sort of introduce you to my living room. This is where one of my looms lives. My other loom is in our dining room, and I have another loom in our family room. Our house actually isn't very big. Um, it's about 1,800 square feet, which I know for some areas of the world is really big, and for other areas of the world, that's a very small home. I do have three looms at the moment, which I'll tell you about another time. Uh, and we do have sort of this studio area of the house that should be a living room and dining room, but we don't have that type of furniture in here. And it allows us to sort of use it as a living, breathing studio. So welcome as I bumble my way through sharing with you guys about my weaving recently. So this is a chance for me to share with you what I've been working on recently. And this is part of the Twill um, online sort of weaving Twill Camp group that we've got going over at the School of Sweet Georgia. Uh, this was the brainchild of my friend Felicia, and I have just been doing my sampling and my initial gaps and sort of playing around with what I want to create and what I want to make, and I thought that I would share that with you here. So the weaving study group for Twills on Four Shafts is actually a spin-off of the new School of Sweet Georgia uh, workshop that's actually weaving Twills on Four Shafts. Jane Stafford also has a twill gamp that she does. I can't remember which season it's in. I feel like it's season four, but I might be wrong. It might be season two. Um, and uh, these twill gamps are a really great way for you to learn how twill works. When I first started learning how about twill and how to weave twill, I sort of just thought, okay, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, one, and that's twill. And if you don't sit down with your uh, threading, so that's where your threads actually go in your shafts and the pattern that they make in there and how they're actually threaded. If you don't sit down and look at that and really spend some time trying to understand and trying to work through what that actually means and then lay your treadling on top of it and really trying to figure out when you push this treadle, what is it that actually happens in the cloth? Uh, it's hard to make that jump of what twill, what the possibilities of twill are. And I very much sort of went through the motions when I first was playing with twill and I would just weave trope as writ, which is where you just weave the way that it's threaded is the way that you weave. So if it's threaded one, two, three, four, then you treadle one, two, three, four. Um, and I you know, sort of didn't progress much beyond that. And it wasn't until I started getting into starting to work on my Master Weaver and starting to sort of delve a bit deeper into these gaps and what the possibilities were that I started to really understand that there's a whole lot more available to us with Twill than I really realized initially. So take the time to do your drawdowns Take the time, uh, if, you, if you've never done drawdowns before and you've never done any type of um, you know, a graphic with your weaving before, I would highly recommend that you take the time 
to figure out how they work, how to read this, what all of this means. Um, that right there will get you started. Um, this up in the little corner here, this is your tie up. So I have six treadles on this loom, one, two, three, four, five, six, down below that are controlled by my feet. The biggest difference between a floor loom and a table loom is that your paddles on a table loom are up here, and on a floor loom, your treadles are down below on the floor. This loom is a four shaft loom, and so generally you have two extra treadles so that you can have plain weave tied up on the outside treadles, depending on how you tie up your loom and what you prefer and all that kind of good stuff. I really like to walk my feet along the treadles. I find that really makes sense for me. Um, I'm trying to make a concerted effort it's concerted uh, effort to use my left side a bit more. I know that sounds a bit random and a bit odd, but my right side, I'm so right side dominant um, that I, my right side is quite unbalanced um, compared to my left. So I really try to do the walking treadles thing. So that means that my outside treadle, my treadle over here on my far left is tied up with shafts one and three. The other treadle on the far right hand side, treadle number six, is tied up with two and four. And that means that I can sit here and throw the treadle and I can kind of develop like a rocking motion and I can weave plain weave. It's really nice, it's intuitive, it feels good. And so treadles uh, four and six, that's how they're tied up. Treadle two to five are tied up in two to twill. So the first uh, shaft and the, first, and the second treadle are tied up one, two. Treadle three is tied up at the back, three, four. And on the other side, my remaining treadles are tied up. So my treadle uh, five is tied up two, three. And my last treadle, treadle number four, is tied up one, four. And that gives me this really nice rocking motion where I can treadle one, two, three, four. And I can rock back and forth and walk my treadles as I go, creating this really lovely rhythm as I, as I weave. And I actually have found that I can weave quite quickly. So that's my tie up. That's in the upper right hand corner here of my paper. Now, depending on where in the world you are and the type of um, weaving that you do, you might have what's called a draw up where your treadling is in the bottom corner and you're looking at your, your draft going upwards. Um, this is a, a tip, stereotypical North American draw down. So this up here is my, is my threading and this going down here is my, my tie up, is my, my treadling. So tie up what the thread, where the threads go up here as I'm threading my heddles and then down here is my treadling. So what my gamp ended up looking like my first one I decided to use a smooth yarn for this and uh, I'm using 8-4 uh, cotton, 4-8 cotton, 8-4 cotton and the reason is because it's really easy to get. I had a lot in my stash. I chose this sort of robin's egg blue here and um, my spotlight here will sort of you know send a, a quite a warm yellow light over this workspace. I bought this from Ikea about 10 years ago and it's one of those lights that I kind of tend to drag around with me. The reason it's so helpful is because it really illuminates this area of my workspace for me. And then I have this little light here, again it's warm light, and it illuminates this side of my workspace. It's not quite as powerful, but it's clipped to the loom and it works really quite well. Some people will put lighting under here, under their castle, and that will help to illuminate their work surface. Um, figure out what works for you, but make sure that your lighting is, is really on point, that, it's, that your work area is lit up. If you work in black a lot, if you work in um, black in your warp and your weft and your hem stitching in black, you want to make sure that your, your work area is really well illuminated. So this initial gamp was the first one that I did in our weaving in our twill study group. And I set this at um, 12 ends per inch, so it's a bit too open for twill in 4-8 cotton, but it was a place to start. And the reason that I did that was I just wanted to see what it would look like if I just went on autopilot and I just wove. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And of course it creates our two, two, twill, uh, two weft picks and then two warp picks and then two weft picks and two warp picks. And it just creates a really lovely fabric. However, it's a bit too open, a bit too drapey and uh, this wouldn't wear very well. I uh, wove some towels in 2-8 cotton um, about a year ago and I set them too open. They were, they were woven in 2-2-12 
and it's been really interesting to watch them as we've used them a ton in our kitchen and they've worn quite a bit faster than my 8-2 cotton set at 24 ends per inch which have worn much much better. They're, the the uh, fabric is, is really sturdy, it's a stable fabric, it almost kind of feels like double knit. You know when you have double knit, uh, when you're doing double knitting and you almost feel like you've got two layers of fabric, that's what it feels like. Um, in the 8-2 cotton. So I knew that in the 4-8 cotton, 12 ends would be too open, but I wanted the comparison. I only did four sections. So this starts off with our straight draw, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, woven trope as writ. And then I went into my point twill, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. And it creates these beautiful chevron pattern going all the way up. And then of course you see what happens on the other threadings. So this is point twill threading, this is broken twill threading, and this is bird's eye twill threading. So you can see as you work your way up the gamp and you see how it weaves on a straight draw, you also begin to see how things change on different, on different uh, threadings. And that's really the richness of these twill gamps. And I think that was lost on me when I first started to weave. I just didn't understand what was happening in, in all of this space. You know, what, what does it matter what point draw looks like on, on, on broken twill? Like, what, why would I want that information? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's beautiful. So um, you start to learn how these things change our weaving and, and how it changes the fabric and, and the effects that you get. So slow down for sure and, and have a look at, at what's created. And if you know that you don't have the right set, it's not loose enough or it's not tight enough or it's not just quite right, slow down and have a look because um, it might be right in one area and not right in another. So this is broken twill uh, woven on straight draw. And then the final one is our bird's eye twill woven on straight draw, which is just a beautiful chevron. It's slightly prolonged compared to our other point twill. Because in this one, we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one. We're adding an extra pick every time we go. So one, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one. So we're just adding. You're going, you're going to start to hear in my voice this musicality that comes up, and I'll talk about that later, um, and it, it's addictive. <laughs> I did do piano for years and years. Um, I still dabble, and uh, I do hear that music coming through as I weave. Now, if we take a moment to have a look, here's our bird's eye over here. This is our bird's eye treadling on our bird's eye twill threading. And of course it creates these bird's eyes in these beautiful diamonds. Again, not tight enough. The set is not close enough, but it gives me an idea of what I'm working toward. So when we get to the top and we're talking about this bird's eye twill uh, and we go to our point twill, that was our point twill threading, but then we've got our bird's eye twill superimposed over top of it in, in, our, in our treadling. So in our threading, we've got our birds, our point twill. It's even confusing for me to just talk about it, even though I know this really well. So we've got our uh, point twill in our threading, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. We've got that beautiful chevron shape in our threading, but then in our treadling, for the bird's eye twill, we've got one, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one. We're adding that extra um, uh, pick in there that makes it just that little bit longer. And what ends up happening in that section is almost like a mock huck lace. It's just absolutely beautiful. Again, not a tight enough set. And so that left me with, okay, let's go to 14 and let's see what we get. So this is my uh, twill gamp on my 14 ends per inch, theoretically 14 picks per inch. Uh, when I was weaving, it was a little bit tighter than that. And I um, was sort of finding that what really was happening was after draw in, so the reed was slayed at 14 ends per inch, but what was actually happening in the fabric was 16 ends per inch. And so 16 ends per inch woven at 16 picks per inch for balanced 50-50 weave, that's what they're looking for. Um, I started to work again. And what ended up happening was my first four went really well. They came off the loom balanced, um, post washing their balance, they pressed out really nicely. Again, you know, a tighter set, so the fabric is a little bit better. Um, I've still got nice drape, but it's got a nice hand to it. Um, it's, it really feels nice. 
And so after I finish those first four, um, leaving trope as red, so straight draw, point twill, broken twill, and then bird's eye twill, now was my opportunity to just play. And so where I went from there was extended reverse twill. Um, I did extended broken twill, so that's the second one here. And then I went into um, rose path, so that rose path is really beautiful. It's a really neat treadling sequence. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, no, am I going the right way? One, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, one, four. So you're extending your points out on both sides. One, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, one, four. There's that musicality coming through again. And uh, then I went into my M's and W's. For those who haven't seen M's and W's before, what I really like about M's and W's is it literally creates M's and W's. So after you have your first couple of inches woven, you can actually see as you progress in your cloth if, you, if you're making mistakes, because it actually doesn't look right. Um, you don't get your M's, you don't get your W's, everything just seems off, and you can usually see where you messed up in your treadling, and you can unweave back to that point. And then the last one that I wanted to talk about, and this is sort of coming into that whole musicality thing, is the undulating twill. So undulating twill is fascinating and it's a really neat weave structure. What I really like about it is that to the untrained eye, it just looks like 2 2 twill. And then you get in there and you get in there a bit closer and you're sort of thinking, oh, wait a second, there's more going on here than I thought. So what's happening in here is just this really amazing uh, sort of growth as you're growing out, um, you're going one, two, three, four. So pretty straightforward, same as our straight draw, draw. But then for your second sequence, you're going one, one, two, three, four. And then for your third sequence, you add again, one, one, two, two, three, four. And I often listen to music when I'm, when I'm weaving and I often find myself getting into this rhythm of one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, two, three, four. And just, it, you can just see it just, it just flows, right? I often don't listen to podcasts. I often don't listen to audiobooks, which I, I read a ton. And part of how I read a ton is by listening to audiobooks. Um, but when I'm weaving, I just often I can't. Um, unless it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you're weaving something really straightforward. So for this, you get this movement through the fabric and undulating twill, if you Google it and look up some patterns and look at some undulating weaves, they're just incredible. There's a sense of movement in the fabric that you just don't see anywhere else. Now you're probably wondering about floating salvages. I did use floating salvages for this because when you have, especially with the undulating twill, when you have two picks, coming um, in one space on the loom where you're not changing your shed, that weft needs somewhere to wrap around. So one, one becomes one, wrap around your floating salvage, one. And that's how you carry those threads up. And of course it creates a really lovely um, edge and a really lovely salvage as well. And that, that creates that. So that is my progress thus far on my, on my twill gamp and on my twill gamp ideas. Um, I ended up doing nine sections on this second one and for if I were to submit to the GCW and submit my twill gamp for the GCW, I would actually only need four, eight sections, four that are woven tromp as writ and then four of my own twill patterns that I choose to sort of superimpose over this to, to see and to observe what's happening across the fabric. Um, one of the things that I learned when I was sort of first coming to twills was how rich they are and how much there is to know and to learn. If you're finding twills really confusing, I would highly recommend that you put on a very simple warp with three or four threadings and just work your way through two or three, maybe four um, treadlings and just see what happens on the fabric and then take your time and sit down and, and, and draw it out. Do your drawdown and witness and see what happens in all of these different areas. And then right on top, you know, uh, bird's eye twill with bird's eye twill treadling. Uh, bird's eye twill threading with broken twill uh, for, my tre for, my, for my treadling. So threading is my bird's eye twill, treadling is my broken twill. And go through and match it up on your on your, uh, on your actual weaving and see what's happening in real life. I, th I think for, for richness of understanding, that's really what you have to do. 
The squares all also have to be big enough to see what's happening. If they're just little one inch squares, you can't see enough. For a color gamp, that's fine, but for twill and other patterns, you need a bigger square. You need to be able to actually see what's happening and give yourself the grace of having uh, borders with a contrasting weft uh, weft picks and or, or um, uh, weft picks and and warp threads so that you can really zero in on that one section and really see what's happening. So as you work your way through your twill gap study with the with the weaving study group on the School of Sweet Georgia, I hope that it's been a really good experience so far. And I don't know what this is going to become and what this is going to look like, but I hope you enjoyed uh, watching and following along with my journey. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, everyone.